What's up everybody, welcome to Level Up with Adobe Premiere Pro. My name is Pedro Flores. I'm Mike Diva. And we're about to level up your music videos. Do you want to level up your music videos? Do you want to speed up your post-production and other tips from the pros? Well, you're in luck because Mike Diva and I are going to show you the best way to level up your music videos using Adobe Premiere Pro. My name is Pedro D. Flores. I'm a director, producer who first worked with our guest back in 2010, Mike Diva. Mike Diva is an extremely talented director. He has directed videos for Little Nas X, Doja Cat, and he currently works for SNL. He joins us today to level up our music videos. First of all, man, thank you for being here. Thanks I really appreciate you. Yeah. All right, man, so I wanted to talk to you about music videos. You know, I think you're probably one of the best music video directors out there right now. Easily. Nah, man, thank easily, you. easily. <laughs> that Little Nas X video that yes, you did, I, uh... fire. That Doja Cat video you just did, fire, man. Like, I feel like almost every video that you've done, music video-wise, Fire, dude. For those who are still kind of new to this game and into this career, what advice would you give them to level up their music videos? For me, the most important thing when shooting a music video is the preparation and like having everything in your head uh, before you get on set and like have to tell people what to do and, and stuff like that. As far as post production, do you have any level up advice for anybody who's you know, starting to edit music videos, color videos, or just all anything in the post-production realm. Any any level up tips for them? My advice for any aspiring directors, especially in the music video realm, is to learn how to edit and learn the basics of special effects. And it's super easy to do. That's crucial, I feel like, especially in music videos, because rarely, like, there's rarely a music video has no special effects. For sure, even even the ones that don't. You don't even notice if, them, they're yeah. invisible effects. Yeah, even if it's like wire like, removal, blah, exactly, blah, blah. Yeah, extending a you know set extension or yeah. removing something in the background. Yeah. So yeah. learning, I can't stress this enough, like the, the learning the basics of visual effects and learning the process of rotoing and the process of you know keying uh, and what goes into that and what works and what doesn't is crucial uh, nowadays because once you speak the language, it might not be something as a director you want to do. Uh, I don't do it anymore, really. I just put like final touches on stuff in After Effects, but being able to speak the language and know what's gonna work and what's not gonna work and knowing like, oh my God, this is gonna be a nightmare for my VFX team. Yeah. I gotta make this easier for them because otherwise it's gonna extend the post time by a week. You yeah. know, and yeah. just like having that knowledge is crucial and that that's helped me a ton. Just like starting out, with After Effects, um, just in my early YouTube days, and just learning new stuff from there, uh, and, and out of necessity, basically, like having to do that because, like, I didn't, you know, have any money to pay somebody, and yeah, like, yeah. you know, I, I had all these ideas. Um, it's really helped me be able to communicate to teams of VFX artists and to work with them to get the uh, the shot that I want. Dude, I appreciate you hopping out, man. It was fun. Yeah, I'm man. Looking forward to see what you do. Yeah, let's see how it goes. So after the interview, Mike had to fly back to New York for SNL. But using his advice, I was on a mission to direct a super awesome music video. Hey, what's up guys? So it's been a couple of weeks since we interviewed Mike Diva and we took all his advice and applied it to this video. And not only that, we took everything we learned from previous Level Up videos and applied it to this music video. And I can honestly say it's one of the greatest videos I've ever directed. So here it is guys, I hope you guys enjoy it. Make sure you guys stay tuned afterwards so you guys can see how I leveled up the edit using Adobe Premiere Pro and Frame.io. Enjoy guys. I can't sit with the silence I'm driving around and I'm screaming your name I look at the clouds in anticipation Hoping to see your face you Know that I'm trying, trying hard not to forget But some things they seem to fade you Know that I'm wildin' Hiding all the pain in the fast lane Even though I know there's a better way all right guys, so the next thing I wanna show you is how I did some advanced color correction using Premiere's AE Link and rotoscoping. And we'll start with this shot right here. Now this shot, as you can see, she's a little too dark. Everything else is fine in the scene. I just wanna brighten her up a little bit more. And that's easy using Premiere's Dynamic Link and After Effects. 
So first, right click on the clip and replace with After Effects Composition. Now what you want to do is duplicate the footage. This is going to be your top layer. This is going to be the layer that you're going to color correct. So now go into your roto brush and just double click and you can start painting. So just kind of paint in there. Doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. And there you go. Now whatever you don't want, you can remove. Uh, just Alt to make it turn red. To remove it, anything else you don't want. And just do that. Okay. And what's cool about the rotor brush is that it does automatic keyframes, so we could just kind of move a little bit forward and it'll automatically do some of those keyframes. So we don't have to really do it frame by frame. Okay. And now what you want to do is you want to freeze your selection after it's done. So let's freeze it. So once it's done, you pretty much have the footage isolated from the rest. You could tweak a couple settings in the rotor brush and refine edge. And now we could just color correct her. So we open up Lumetri and then we just color correct it a little bit. I'm just gonna expose it a little bit higher, mess with the contrast. And uh, let me see, maybe put up the highlights a little bit. Okay, now you'll see the before and the after. Now we really made her pop out of that scene. And now when you're done, you can just go back into Premiere and it'll be ready for you right here. All you gotta do is right click, render and replace. And here's the final shot in the music video. As you can see, she pops out way, 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 way more than before. And just to recap, we used Premiere's dynamic link to send a clip to After Effects. And then in After Effects, we rotoed the footage. And then after we rotoed it and separated her from the rest of the scene, we were able to color correct her and brighten her up. And this was the final result. And there it is guys. I hope you enjoyed the video as much as I enjoyed making it. It was honestly one of the most challenging videos I've ever done. The most VFX I've ever done for one video. And um, I'm just super proud of how it came out. I'm proud of my team. I'm proud of the artist, Stofa Vasquez. Yo, Mike Diva, thank you so much for your advice, man. And even though it was one of the most challenging videos I've ever done, Adobe made it super easy. One of the new things that leveled up our production during set was the use of Frame.io. As we were filming, the footage was automatically available on the cloud. And using our Frame.io account, we were able to access the footage and send it to anybody for review. So we use an Automos Shogun Connect to capture our footage and setting up camera to cloud and Frame.io with it was pretty easy. So first off, make sure you have an Automos Cloud Studio account and a Frame.io account, which is free with Adobe Creative Cloud. Okay, so now the first thing you wanna do is just enable Wi-Fi and connect to the internet and enable Automos Cloud Studio. Now, once you do that, you should see your device and your Automos Cloud Studio account. Now you have to add Frame.io as a destination and then sign in. From there, you can choose which account and project. Just make sure C2C Connections is enabled in the settings. Now back on the device, you should see a three word code. And now enter the three word code into your Automos Cloud account. Okay, now you're connected. Okay, so now the footage will be sent to the destination folder in Frame.io, instantly available as soon as you stop recording, which you can access in various sources, including a phone, a laptop, even within Premiere. And there it is, everybody. I hope you guys enjoyed this series as much as I enjoyed making it. Make sure to catch all the other episodes which are on this channel right now. And uh, I hope you guys learned something. Till the next one, guys. Peace.